Welcome to Gossip About Gossip, powered by Hedera Hashgraph. In each episode, we'll cut through the hype of blockchain promises and explore real-world examples of organizations creating the next generation of decentralized applications, which will bring trust back to the internet for us all. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the latest episode of Gossip About Gossip, the podcast where we talk about real-world applications of distributed ledger technology. My name is Zenobia Godstock, and I'm the SVP of Communications here at Swirl Labs, helping to grow the Hedera ecosystem. Today on the podcast, we have a very special guest who all of you know and love on a topic that we're excited to talk about. So welcome back, Dr. Lehman Baird. Hey, good to be here. How are you, Lehman? I'm doing well. How about you? Good, thank you. So Lehman, you have recently come back from some back-to-back travel where you talked about some exciting topics. You were in St. Moritz for a conference called CFC St. Moritz. You penned a piece for them about the intersection of blockchain and AI. And then you were in Davos on a panel that is talking about how we responsibly govern the future, everything from future finance to AI. And on that panel, um, one of the projects that has been built on Hedera from Equity Labs talked about their version of responsible AI and what they have released to the market and made available on Hugging Face um, in terms of an AI lineage model that in part depends on Hedera. Um, So this is a topic that is very interesting to a lot of different people. It is massive. We could spend hours talking about it. But I'd love to get, you know, just your initial thoughts on this intersection. And then how do we think about these two things working hand in hand? And how do we think about DLTs really helping with that governance of this new technology that a lot of people are nervous about? Yes. So (laughs) DLTs are powerful. The blockchain world knows that. And AI is powerful. And the two together are extremely powerful. And they're both changing the world. And so lots of people are talking about both of them right now because there's just so much going on. And, and, you know, of course, I did Hashgraph and Hedera. I'm a blockchain, DLT, that kind of person. But my PhD was originally in AI. It was reinforcement learning, uh, talking about how you could do with deep neural networks, all the stuff we're talking about these days. So it's just exciting to see it all come full circle. You asked about the intersection. That's what everybody asks about. So there's several different ways that these two worlds intersect. Right now, people are very worried about what happens when you have generative AI like ChatGPT and it is malicious in some way because someone slipped in bad training data? So the beauty of these new AI systems is that you don't program in very much at all. Almost everything is just learned from the data. The bad thing is everything's learned from the data. So if you have bad data, it's garbage in, garbage out. And so we, we really care about the data. And so You mentioned Equity Labs, which are doing cool things where they keep track of the data used to train the the AI. And it may not be that simple. It may be that some data was used to train an AI, and then more data was used to tune that AI, and then maybe even more data was used to train it, and in the future may have that you have two different neural networks that each train separately, and now somehow they're working together to train a third one. Uh, You can even do that. You can have a neural network in the loop of the training, and then you could have humans in the loop where humans have to say yes or no on various things and give feedback, and you'd like to record what they gave as their feedback, they did additional training, it gets complicated. And so what they were doing is they draw out this entire tree of how data trained the various pieces of this and kept coming in with more data and so on, and it can just get more complicated over time. And then they use Hedera to immutably record this. And so when you finally end up with a model A model here is the stuff that it learned. Uh, It's just, it's a bunch of numbers. It's just the weights inside the neural network. But that list of numbers, that is the model that was trained from all this data. They can say, well, here's a hash of it. And if you check it and it has that hash, then you know you have the model that was trained from this whole tree that we have. Uh, So this is exciting. I think there's a lot that can be done in this intersection. I've heard people talk about using secure hardware that will digitally sign as it's doing the learning. Then, of course, you have to trust the hardware, but okay, maybe that's one more layer of security. Uh, and then all of this can get anchored into a DLT. So the ledger of Hedera can hold all this stuff. It stays forever. It can never go back and be changed. And that's helpful. That is what you need to be able to trust this. 
Uh, then you also want to go back and look at the data. So what can have is hashes of the data sets and you go back and you look at the data set, but you compare it to that immutable hash and you know that it's the real data set that was used. This is one part of the intersection and it's what we just talked about. There are other parts. Right. That feels like really sort of the first part, right? The, the okay, now that you've gotten it out the door, then what? Yes. Yeah, so maybe that's the low hanging fruit. Maybe that's the first thing you do. There's a second thing that you can talk about, though, which is you have data. Maybe you create things online or maybe you have your just your personal data, maybe your medical data that you are willing to allow people to use to train these AIs. But if they're going to go make millions of dollars off the AI, you would like a cut of that. And so maybe in the future, people will be allowing their data to be used, but they want to get small royalties from it. Also, just the question, did you allow your data to be used or not? So um, in the medical world, people are doing this. They're, they're looking at using Hedera for keeping track of your permissioning on your data. Which doctors are allowed to see my data and which aren't? Which medical studies are allowed to use my data and which aren't? And I can always revoke my permission. And so you use a ledger for that. And of course, just digitally signing something that says you have my permission isn't good because then you couldn't remote revoke it. It's really why you need a ledger. You need a DLT or a blockchain. You need something that's going to hold that forever. And that you have this single source of truth. I can always go back and see if you have revoked your, date, your permission or not. So permissioning is a big deal already in medical data for medical studies, but it's also now going to become a big deal for AI, I think. And so maybe your data could be used for AIs and then then you could say, maybe I'm doing this because I'm a nice person and I want the DLT, I want Hedera to remember if it's been revoked. But maybe you go one step beyond and say, hey, I'd like to have royalties. Now, of course, if millions of people are giving data, your royalties are going to be very tiny. They right. can't write you a check every time you have a royalty for a tenth of a cent. It just doesn't work. The check and the mailing is you know 100 times more expensive than the, than the royalty. So what you need to do is have micropayments which means you need to be using cryptocurrency. It can be divided down so small. Uh, and so even if you batch it up and only send you a check once a year, if it's less than a dollar, really you want to be doing this with ledgers. So this is a third way that, that we can be part of this AI story in a very important way. And Lehman, this makes me also think of a few things. You know, um, the other day I saw that someone said their voice had been spoofed online to... Um, trick their parents into, you know, potentially wiring money to someone. We've also just seen Hollywood go through a whole, um, you know, contract negotiation and strike over the use of AI generated content that comes from, you know, actors' voices. Maybe my voice is not very valuable, but maybe Morgan Freeman's voice is very valuable. And, you know, they would like to, he would like to have control over who gets to use that and how. And so it seems like there's, besides just healthcare, there's a whole variety of applications where your personal data or your personal sort of, you know, who you are and the kinds of things you could be, could put out there could be used for, um, you know, for payments and accountability. Absolutely. So all sorts of things of your personal name and face and other things you can be licensing out and then revoking the license if you don't get enough money or whatever. Uh, those are, those are things we can do. And I think AI just accelerates those because now we have to worry about it. There's maybe more of a market now for all the little things about you because they can train an AI. And so this becomes a big deal of tra tracing all this and maybe even doing the payments through the AI. Those are three ways that blockchain can help AI. You know, DLTs can make AI better. It can go the other direction too. Can AI help us? And the big thing that I really care about the most is checking code to see if it is cor uh, correct. So already you could imagine having something like ChatGPT, look at some code and tell you if there's any bugs. It may be wrong. It may hallucinate. It may make up stuff. Yeah, that's okay. But um, I'll look at what it tells me and then maybe I'll find some bugs. If it's occasionally right, hey, that's better than nothing. Uh, so that's something we can do. I personally am more excited about formal methods. You have a math proof that the code is correct and it mathematically proves it and it's checked by a computer. Uh, we did this for the algorithm of Hashgraph itself. Uh, Carl Prairie. Professor at Carnegie Mellon University used COQ, a computer system, to math to have the computer check that the math proof is correct. Hashgraph is ABFT. And this can be extended to actually checking code as well. Is the Java code correct? Is the Rust code correct? Whatever. 
is the smart contract code correct? If a smart contract is written, how many millions of dollars have been lost because people made bugs, put in bugs when they wrote their smart contracts? Uh, that's really not funny. Uh, this could help. And so you could have humans look at your smart contract. You should do that. That's helpful. Maybe you have something like ChatGPT look at it and see if it finds any bugs. Yeah, it's better than nothing. But really what you want is a math proof that there are no bugs. Um, for some definitions of bugs. Maybe there's some things it won't catch. But there's whole classes of bugs you can catch with a math proof and just mathematically prove it won't happen. This is a hard problem. People do this today. They've been doing this for many years. But it takes so many human hours to get just a little bit of math proof done that it's not worth doing in most cases. And I think AI may be able to do this. I've seen some uh, recent work at Google where they're making real progress, where it's doing... Um, almost not winning the contest, but doing really well at Math Olympiad proofs for geometry. Yeah, this is for high school kids, but it's for really smart high school kids. <laughs> and they're, they're really hard problems. The geometry ones are maybe in some sense the easiest ones for this kind of an approach, but maybe they'll be able to do the other kinds someday too. And, uh, and I, in many ways, formal methods are easier than all that. I'm not giving you a Math Olympiad problem and saying, prove it. Instead, I'm giving you a human written proof with a whole bunch of steps saying that this program is correct. And I just want COQ to go in and fill in the gaps between each pair of steps. That's all I want it to do. Because to a computer, to a human, these two steps, well, obviously, if you know this, then of course you know this. But to a computer, there's a million little steps you have to put in between in order to make this one prove this one. And COQ could do that if it had AI. I'm extremely excited about that possibility. I, I, well, I, I have to say, having tried to create some seventh grade algebra problems for my son with chat GPT, we have, and, you know, hopefully there are, are models that are better than that one. Um, but, you know, it does seem like that's an area where there is a lot of room for improvement and a lot of room to use that compute horsepower to, to advance us quite a bit. And then, you know, what, when you think about sort of the, the feedback that goes back into AI, is there any rule for DLT there? Feedback going back into AI. Um, and going back into the, to the models, right? Refining models. Um, you know, I don't know how some of that is done today, but um, is there a rule for DLTs in terms of, you know, demonstrating that that feedback has been incorporated um, or other ways to think about sort of closing that loop? Yeah. So there's the whole provenance thing we talked about, the whole tree of all the feedbacks that have happened and you can keep track of them. If you're learning something related to DLTs, of course, you can be doing a, a blockchain explorer and seeing the data that you want to see and what happened in the blockchain. There's another thing too, though. Earlier, you mentioned governance. It may be helpful to have organizations that are governed like a DAO, like a distributed um, decentralized autonomous organization. Uh, we could talk about that. You could talk about having an organization to manage it. Uh, you could say that there have been organizations set up to do AI open source, and they have taken a sudden turn, and now they're not so open source. And maybe there has been heartburn about such things. Maybe what you really need to do is set up an organization that is controlled by the crowd and is less likely to suddenly uh, change its mind about what it's doing. Uh, there's all sorts of interesting things that are made possible with, with ledgers that uh, could make the whole world better, including the world of AI. Lehman, any other thoughts that you want to share with us? I know this area is evolving so quickly. I think we will probably have a continuous series on this as we see some of these um, systems and solutions getting built out, as we see new use cases and new challenges coming to market. Um, you know, how, how on the scale of excited to nervous, how excited or nervous are you about the future of AI? Oh, very excited. So, Yes, of course, I'm nervous about anything. Anything, if you build a hammer, you can use it to hurt people, but you can also use it to drive nails. And I think that this, of course, will be used for good and evil, and we need to fight the evil and you fight for the good. But the good potential is so enormous. Um, it is almost unbelievable. In fact, Mance and I recorded a First Principles video on the future of AI. And so if you're interested in watching that, well, we just babble for a half hour on where we think AI is going. Um, so yeah, it's fun stuff. Fantastic, Lehman. Well, definitely, folks, go check that out. And Lehman, thanks for taking the time with us today. We really appreciate it. All right. Thanks a lot. <laughs>